Hi, I'm Mr. Megatronic, and welcome to the first episode of Pen to Plastic. Today's episode is the first in a two-part series where I'm going to design, 3D model, and 3D print a phone dock. Now, that doesn't sound very interesting. Well, I've always had a soft spot for vintage electronics, and an idea I've had for a long time is to design a phone dock that looks like an old console television. Now, I, I love old vintage electronics, like this portable Sony Trinitron here from 1973. It has a lot of style, a lot of class, it has a metal bezel on it. I've just always enjoyed, you know, the way they did design back then. But modern phones, they're all very sleek and they're all very modern. I like the novelty concept of being able to just slide the phone into a little plastic TV console so you can watch it like your grandma used to have. Okay, it's time to get this started. So, but before I start, what I like to do is I like to look at examples of actual technology that, that's in the wild, just to kind of take a look at the motifs, the kinds of things that were done during the different eras. And I'm trying to not have this look like an actual specific model. There's a lot of considerations to this. I want it to be more functional and a kind of an homage or a pastiche uh, to old televisions rather than an exact copy of an actual model. Adding those kind of limitations in that will just make things more difficult uh, and add no real value. So um, this is going to be a cell phone in a 3D printed plastic enclosure. So the goal here is that it can be at least useful while it's in there. So the tenants that I have for this design is that the buttons are accessible. The power on one side, the volume on the opposite side. Also, that the location of the speaker grill on the bottom of this phone, much like an iPhone, uh, has some manner of acoustic amplification. That way, uh, it doesn't require any amplified sound or anything. It, it is just made louder by the design of the enclosure. As well as, if possible, the ability to access the micro USB port on the bottom so it could be plugged into a charger while it's running. Now, it should fit snugly, uh, but I want this to not only be viable just for the Galaxy S6. I would like it if similarly sized phones could be used in this. So certain locations um, of buttons as well as uh, the charging port, I'll leave extra space. I also want, I'm considering making use of a spring that I can 3D print that would press it up against the front uh, that way it doesn't slide around while it's closed. Now, since this phone is widescreen, uh, I have to kind of run through the motions in my head as to whether I want uh, the CRT quote-unquote <laughs> tube of this television to be widescreen so the majority of the screen is visible, or uh, is it acceptable to have a small cropping uh, just to give it kind of a more authentic... Uh, aspect ratio. That's kind of hard because if I want to access any of the menus on the touch screen, they may be occluded by the, uh, the CRT mask. So um, they're just things to look at. But uh, what I want to first do is look at some past televisions and kind of get a get an idea for uh, for the kinds of features that were put on. So um, I have a collection of images here, and I just am going to go through it and kind of point out a few things that kind of pique my interest. That way I can possibly incorporate them into my design. So uh, starting with this guy, this is a very venerable uh, uh, television. It's a, it's a Magnavox of the yesteryear, uh, you know, back when televisions were furniture. And uh, the idea was that, you know, you could hide it. Uh, they're not hung on the wall at this point in time, um, so may as well have it blend in. They got these, uh, they got these, uh, yeah, let me change my brush size. They got these speaker grills here that, uh, are cloth covered. So, you know, the sound can emanate from there. There's a faux panel here with an ornamentation. Uh, this is a very centrally designed thing, which has, uh, the screen in the dead middle, and then these this 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 bi these bifold doors will cover it. Uh, this is a very 
standard kind of a TV you'd probably find at Sears. Um, and it has just the dials right there, very straightforward wood cabinet. So, you know, this is probably a very boring television for, from its era, but at the same time, you know, the, uh, this this is... We want to be whimsically tacky with this. <laughs> so, um, let's look at another one. So, yeah, this one is Ferguson. It's it's a uh, more modern take, even though it's an older set from the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Um, this one, it's more of a portable TV. It may not have a lot of the features, but one thing we'll find a lot is just that the, that the tubes are... Uh, the, the tubes dictate some of the some of the design traits, like the bezel that restrains the tube, as well as um, just the location of features. You know, these things are heavy, so uh, it's usually centrally anchored and it's on the inside. Uh, this guy here, this is a uh, you know, it, it's a console television. It has a speaker right behind the grill right there. Uh, this one is. Uh, early 70s but uh probably even late 60s uh this one i like the look of the chamfer that was done on this bezel here uh it, it makes the tube less roundy round and it kind of you know hides hides the limitations of of the physiology so uh and then you know there's straight lines here and here and there's a trim line right there so uh, there's uh, what the main thing that I like most about this is the little standy legs. I I've always liked these these wooden you know angled legs that that it gives it character. It's it's like you could see the little legs walking the TV across the uh, across the floor, a la Beetlejuice. It, it it just has that character to it, and I I always found that that was a whimsical trait. I've used that in a few designs of my own. Uh, here we go. Now this is big old. Big old th set. I think this might be a Zenith. Uh, I can't tell from the image, but these guys, oftentimes they'd also have record players. I believe this one has a record player in that drawer there, but it is a stereo television console. Uh, this is l late 60s, I think. It has the uh, older style colors. Uh, color tube but again you know you, there's a storage unit it's designed to kind of fit in it has some nice bevels here and there again i love the standy legs um you know uh it's very very good set to get caught up with green acres uh <laughs> especially with a clock like this and a lamp like that um speakers flanking on the sides the nice thing about th a design c like this is that uh, depending on how I caricaturize it, a cell phone screen could theoretically fit in there in a reasonable way uh, without uh, being too pushed out of the way. And then this extra space on the sides would afford me uh, a void to put a, a cable, as well as if sound is coming out of the speakers, uh, some manner of acoustic cavity. Now, I also have to be careful because my 3D printer has a very small build area, so uh, it couldn't even print something the width of a cell phone, just barely. So mine will be multi-part, and uh, I think multi-part will be useful uh, later in the design, and uh, I'll allude to that more in the modeling phase. So um, on this TV, again, another standing console. This one is obviously, you know, mid to late 70s. It it, it, this is where they began transitioning away from consoles. But with this one, it's basically you can kind of see that there's just a plastic, uh, you know, chassis sitting inside of a wood cabinet. So you may have even been able to buy this television without its wood cabinet. Um, but again, lovely little standy legs, very minimalist layout on this one. Uh, I think this one even has a digital tuner on it. So uh, this one would, you know, pick up remote commands. I don't know if this is a Zenith with that listened to the clicker, but uh, a, a set like this also continues to suggest that I could have a cell phone in here and there's enough room for cables and whatnot. So it, uh, it affords me the luxury. So... Uh, I like that theme. Now here's just a, ca a tabletop television, just a real basic VHS, VHF, UHF set. Um, again, this is, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, 
the thing about this though that I liked was just the nice sharp clean be- uh, bezel uh, that arrests the curvature of the of the tube. It it does kind of this is when TV started becoming more and more square, uh, and you know it fit into people's uh, people's environments much better. But uh, uh, this on the speaker grill is an interesting little motif there for the for uh, just to kind of break up the the flatness of that panel and let some sound through so you know it, it's something to look at here's actually i believe this might have been the same brand yeah this is uh the same brand as that guy uh just a different generation um but it's another view this i believe this one's a little older uh doesn't have as big of speakers on the side but you can see actually the speakers shoot off the sides, and then this is an, you can almost see through the uh, through the uh, fabric of the speaker grill. That's an acoustic vent. So these are side shooting speakers. Uh, I don't believe this has any extra sound other than the radio and the TV. But uh, yeah, this is an older set. This one might not even be in color. But uh, again, lovely legs, straight wood. It just kind of it's it's for the inspiring <laughs> now here we go this is odd uh, I believe this is a uh, Magnavox um, no this is a Phillips I believe uh, the hard <laughs> it's sometimes hard to tell this is deliberately archaic looking except you can just pretty much see in there that's just a Phillips TV shoved in that hole this is probably late 70s early 80s I'd say late 70s but also there is a dropping record player in here, uh, as well as a stereo. And uh, I wouldn't doubt if there was also an 8-track slot on that. Uh, so, speaker grills. This just shows you can kind of go for a Louis V uh, <laughs> and, and, and still have your electronics at the same time. Uh, looking at it, this also has a roll, a, a shutter um, cabinet. So, these will... Uh, when it's open it's it's rolled into the back like that so they were all shut and cover it which is a neat little mechanism um, again nice big old uh, big old uh, console TV this one I like a lot because it has that uh, everything on it's on purpose look where this entire this entire frame here was intentionally designed to correlate to this console here, to that bezel there, to this this these lines down here. It, it all just looks complete and together. And don't don't think I didn't notice the little DVD player down there. I don't think that's original. And then it has this little aerial, this little spiral aerial back here uh, for picking up the the UHF and the VHF. Um, so yeah, I like this one, but I think the features on it are small and sparse. So while I like the look of it, you know, taking some of those elements into a, into a small 3D printed enclosure may not pan out. So we'll have to see. Uh, but one, one thing I did like about this is the curvature of the tube is very subdued for its age. So it's easier to kind of see how well that can be hidden but we don't have a curvature on the screen of the phone we're going to have to suggest that so uh and then this last is this zenith this is a easily mid 70s uh stuffy <laughs> tv it's been burned in but this one has um i think it's probably a more lazy design in that there's just a little drawer down there I don't even know if those are real. Uh, the speaker grills with with the with the dowels in it, the banisters. But uh, yeah, it's just a just a TV shoved in a box. Um, this is the TV your grandma had. So I would just say that uh, on a on a set like this, it's not quite the style I'm going for. I'm I'm, I'm probably shooting for the late '70s uh, console. So you know that being said, I'm gonna go here and sketch out a couple ideas so what I'm thinking just from looking at that uh, I have to since I have to break the parts you know break them up I have different elements to this uh, let's see
I'm thinking the central point of this is the screen. So, you know, you kind of start with that. That That is the most important thing. That's what you want to see. Um, of course, I am going to need to suggest to a tube. So what I'll probably wind up doing is making a insert that can uh, have basically a flat surface, but then it it, it it smoothly flows out into uh, a square, so it, it goes from a you know, rounded rectangle out to a square. Now, there will probably be some occlusion of the menus on the phone, but uh, if I make it easier to insert and remove your phone, that's forgivable. This is not a dock that's intended to be a fully functioning fixture. This is meant to be a novelty where you can slot your phone in it and be like, well, isn't that silly? <laughs> uh, it, hopefully it would give some people some joy by seeing it <laughs> um, so based on the size of this and I expect it to be wider uh, wider in this dimension because of uh, the length of the of the screen is going to be uh, longer than that but in terms of just the aesthetics um, while I don't like adding things that have no purpose or have no function at all. Uh, having a faux button or two on there on uh, something this small is not going to harm. It'll probably just add to the style. But what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to have um, one of the buttons be right about here and it'll look like a knob except this guy is going to be on a, on a prong and basically I'll create a notch in the plastic that the button is resting on so when the phone is inserted this should be over either the home button on the Samsung or um, I don't know if it will work on the uh, newer iPhones because it's not a physical button it's a touch sensor but on the uh, home buttons that still have the clack in it uh, it should be able to press that uh, this guy up here, this guy could be faux, so we got our VHF and UHF dials. And then that would be in its own little bezel there. Um, I can't get too crazy with the protrusions because uh, as per my goals, I don't want to print this with support material. I hate cleaning up support material. So the goal here would be uh, if I can create features <laughs> that uh, can self-support in the print process and maybe need a little bit of a cleanup or at the worst I add a, a small sprue just to support it but other than that um, the, the based on where I put the splits is also going to kind of decide what works and what doesn't uh, in this area here I'll probably have just an ornamentation to make it look like a badge so um, for the acoustic properties as well as being able to have a space for the cables um, I'm going to add to its length uh, speaker grills now these speaker grills uh, since it's going to be 3d printed I want it to have to be able to be permeated by sound but not be just a series of holes so um, the idea I have uh, is like those old church organs where to increase the uh, the loudness they would open up these shutter vanes that would allow more air into the system and therefore uh, give it a bigger throw to your bassiness so um, my print orientation for this uh, will dictate what I can do but what I'd like to do is I'd like to have vanes on both sides like that and then those veins are angled down like that so that way sound can come through it but visually you're not going to see the inside the nice thing about that is depending on our print orientation they should be fairly easy to print with no need for support structure. Uh, on the body, we'll give it a nice little kind of underlip. That way, it has a bit of a prominence to it. Kind of, kind of a, um, kind of a, a, 
a stature. <laughs> now it doesn't need to be very deep, that, that, but I don't want it to be so top heavy that it falls over. So there'll be a bit of artificial depth to this, but that will only help in the acoustics as well as uh, a way of hiding cables. So, you know, relative distance of, of about that, I guess. Um, now on the top, I won't, I won't do the top yet, but, uh, what I'll do is, uh, I'll have some holes in the bottom that are square and then I'll 3d print my favorite little standy legs that way in the event it has to, it can just trot off the table. And then for the top, I'm just thinking of pretty much just a flat plate. Now, I might uh, give it a little bit of complexity there, but I think this pretty much does it on the underside. Um, here, I'll do this. I will use this color and I'll draw where, let me put this on a different layer. I'll draw where the phone would be. Boop, boop, boop. And then it's home button would be there. And then on the inside, let's see, I'll use green for that. On the inside, if, if you were to lift it up and look underneath, there'd be an opening right there and right there. That way, depending on which way you put the phone in there, if some phones have buttons up here or down there, there's a void. So either you can access them to press them or by sliding it down in, you don't accidentally press the buttons either. They don't rest on anything. Uh, on the top, I'm just going to have the top lift off. It won't have any fanciness or hinges. So you'll just be able to get right onto the, that button that, that would be on this side of this phone. Uh, in the rear, I think what I'll do is I'll make a little section where you can add just a little spring right there. A 3D printable spring that'll slot in and all that'll do is just push it forward uh, so it presses up against and it doesn't slide around. That way if you want it you just remove the top, slide the phone out, um, and then on the inside there could be just an opening on the back over here and over here and if you have your cord plugged in, it could just go out the back. I think that that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, proportionally, the proportions on this won't will change, you know, based on what works and what doesn't. So, in, in terms of this design, uh, I like the aesthetic elements of it. Now, print direction. This is the thing that you think about right when you uh, are getting you know, ready to, to, to get to the actual work of the design. If you're doing something for 3D printing and you're using, you know, more of a consumer grade printer, uh, you're less worried about, you know, the finish quality and more about how hard it's going to be to remove the support material. If you have a high-end printer that has a dissolvable support material or your SLA printing it, yeah, that's great. But, you know, uh, everybody else who has just an FDM printer, um, just a basic guy. I try to design things to need as little support material, if any. And so what I like to do is think about, you know, what surface is going to be resting on the platform? Where will it fit? In terms of this, I see this as being two body pieces. Uh, I'll, I'll use this pink line to show the separations. So for the main body, I'll separate it here. That way the this surface here is resting on the platform and it's printing this way. 
what that will do is it will support all of these along these lines and then when it comes to this guy the the, the vertical support for this tine here will match it'll it'll hold it uh, and this is an arch so even simple printers can do reasonable bridging so that gap between there should be okay and that button should be relatively okay provided you don't push on it very hard um, so the grain of the print would be going this way so I don't see much issues with that inside of here um, I'm gonna make a little track and, and that goes vertically there. The point of that is that this insert will be a separate piece just for this mask. And the reason behind that is that it will be able to slide down and uh, intersect on this part and that part covering up a seam. It creates a seam on both sides. Also, if this was integrated into this piece, which I'll be printing going this way, then it will not have support for this edge here on the on the mask as it's being printed and I'll have to add a bunch of thin support material. I don't want to do that. So this piece will be slid in to cover the screen. Also, theoretically, this design could be modified for other phones. So it would be nice to have less modified if I wanted to come up with a different mask or put in a custom screen and just have a little Raspberry Pi enclosure or something. I don't know. The top plate will be printed the uh, in two pieces. Uh, I don't want this seam to be in the same spot, so I'm actually going to uh, have that one down the middle. And uh, to join them, I'll probably make just like a little tongue and slot on the two parts. Uh, the legs, they'll all be separate. And then they'll just insert into holes that are in those two body parts. The last part would be this tongue here. And I have to think about how I will support not the tongue itself, because I could just print that on its on, on its edge, like right there. What I gotta think about is how will it be secured inside the enclosure? Like will I have a track here? Uh, that's that's a feature of this part and and if so can I make a track on the other side without support to hold it or maybe it needs to be further away from the center and only apply pressure to like the rear end of it but it's broad enough so then this piece can have one half of the track this piece can have the other half and then the tongue can be right here pushing on a third of one side of the phone which could just be enough to keep it in place I don't know anyways so I think I have a good concept a lot of what I do is uh, is freeform so I'm going to hop over into inventor and we're going to make this bad boy so uh, yeah I will see you there